There was a fellow I met in Montreal who scouted for me um, briefly, a guy by the name of Jacques Campeau. He was actually the guy that told me that you should see this uh, young lady play hockey. I says, what position does she play? He says, she's a goaler. The courage, I don't think a lot of people realize the courage that she has had to have to um, go to the NHL level and, and play and do what she did. And I think it opened a lot of eyes and opened doors for, for younger players. You know, wow, there's this, you know, woman with all this courage to go in the net and, and stand in front of, uh, you know, guys that just bury the puck that she made it into the pros. I mean, it was just, uh, it was awesome for us to see that, you know, because we all dreamed of it. In 1992, a young Quebec woman, Manon Réaume, made history by becoming the first woman to play in the National Hockey League. Through the years, especially when I got older and get to the pro, and it become like a fairy tale as far as I was doing what I like to do and I was getting paid to do it. So that was the best, you know, none of the girls could have said that before, you know, I can play hockey and make a living out of it. So that was great. And at the same time, I had to go through a lot of things that, you know, I didn't like or it was really hard. And like the negative media and always have the pressure on me and the loneliness too. I was lonely a lot. But it, I always forgot every time I was going back on the ice. When I was out there in my crease making save, I was just like, that was in my world and I really enjoyed it. Today, Manol lives in Las Vegas with her husband Jerry, a hockey player. You're gonna get to the center ice circle. Go this side, challenge, and make the save. Okay? Do a couple on one side, a couple on the other. These days, she faces a new challenge: how to juggle the life of a mother with a life in hockey. Because I'm getting back in shape and I want to go back to the next Olympics, I need to get to uh, work out every day, um, either on the ice or at the gym. I got the baby to take care of and I got my job too to <laughs> do. So uh, in Las Vegas, I'm taking care of uh, the hockey tournament over there. So I always have some calls to do and teams to reach and uh, flyers to put together. I never have a minute for myself. Like I think I like it better that way. I don't know if I could live one day doing nothing. Uh, I finally found the contract, so I will set it back to you uh, in the next few days here, um, so you can have everything done maybe by next week. Okay, thanks, bye-bye. Amen. I go baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Je te baptise au nom du Père et du Fils et du Saint. I'm from a small little town the suburb of Quebec City. I started playing hockey about five years old. Wow, they still have this. This is my father who made that. Ready? Yeah. I ended up being a goalie a little bit because my brother, you know, used to shoot on me when they were younger. They wanted to practice their shot and they needed someone and that was the only way I can play with them. One year Manon was skiing and she broke a leg. She was wearing a cast while we were out playing hockey on the street. She wanted to play with us all the time. She wanted to be in goal, so she goaled with her cast on. You can see how much she loved hockey. My 
my father was my first coach and that was kind of nice because uh, at first being a woman, you know, a girl <laughs> and playing with boys, it's not everybody who accepts that. Actually, the first time I show up at the ring to make sure the parents was not to complain before the practice and wait after to complain. Each, uh, first of all, we dress at home, but just before to get in the ring, he put my helmet in the parking lot to make sure that nobody knew I was a girl. You know, the whole time I played, he always protect me that way. That's why he was kind of hard on me. I had to play well to play. I remember with my dad the, I was shooting on me. I was getting a pack on my arms, and I was like, ouch, and I want to stop. And <laughs> my dad said, you know what, the puck's going to hurt during the game or practice, so if you stop every time it hurt, you're not going to go far. That's why after that, if I got injured during a game, I was just keep it for myself and I was not telling that I was injured and just keep playing and playing and just want to be tough. One time one of the parents said to my father, you know, my kid is doing very well. He's playing in the street and he's such a good goaltender. You should have him playing in that instead of your daughter. So my father said, oh, no problem. Next game he can be in that because he want to prove a point to the people. And we never lose by such a high score. After that game, you know, every player was coming to my dad and was like, we want Manon back in the net. We want Manon back in the net. No way we want that goaltender in the net. And that lesson really taught me when I got an obstacle, it's really to face it and to deal with it instead of just running away. And uh, it really helped me for the future because I have been through a lot of obstacles. Yeah, I think Mano had more hard days than uh, everybody else because uh, she was, uh, I think, the only girls in, in Quebec in the whole region to play uh, in the men's team. The guys were teasing her a lot and uh, especially around the net, they were skating around the net, hey Mano, Mano, go home or, you know, <laughs> go do your laundry, uh, you know, some, some stuff, but, uh, you know, like, a, she's a strong woman, so she just kept playing. In 1984, Manon fulfilled a childhood dream to play in the Quebec International Pee Wee Tournament. A few years earlier, the rules had been changed to allow girls to play. Manon became the first girl ever to play in the tournament in front of 15,000 people. I think the biggest memory I have is when I skate on the ice and just to see my legs shaking when I was skating around for the warm-up. But the funniest thing is to see when the game start, like, I just kind of forget about all those people, about where I was, how big the building were, and I was just in the game and concentrating my game. And I think that's when I realized then, you know, I, I was able to play under pressure. Est-ce que tu voudrais faire une carrière professionnelle là-dedans? Ben, je sais pas encore, j'aimerais sûrement en rester loin, ça dépend des euh, conditions qu'il y aurait plus tard. Et tu prêtes à te battre? Ben, oui. On souhaite que tu réussisses maintenant. Merci. J'ai fait le saut quand j'ai vu une fille dans le vestiaire. Là. Je me suis posé des questions. Quelles questions? Ben, je me suis posé qu'est-ce qu'elle faisait là. Euh... Comment tu pensais? Ben, je pensais pas qu'une fille, ça gaulerait, vu que c'est pas bien mais fort. Okay. Comment tu trouves ça, une fille qui garde les buts? Ben, je trouve ça très bien. Ça va donner un swing pour les filles, pour qu'ils l'invitent à jouer au hockey. But the funniest thing, at that time, at 11, I had a, in the newspaper, the title was Manon can reach the NHL one day. <laughs> How funny that at that age someone said that and, you know, later it happened. And at the same time, I had a chance to practice with the Quebec Nordics. That was one of the biggest thrill in my hockey life and uh, Daniel Bouchard was my favorite goaltender at that time. Overnight, Manon became a media star, a Cinderella. Despite her success, every year Manon had to fight for a spot on the top level team. I got cut from the AA team and uh, actually, you know, one of the parents was in charge there and so my dad kind of told me then, 
you know, the fact that I was a girl didn't help at all, and then maybe the reason why I was cut because I was a girl, and um, so I really, you know, that really upset me at that time, and that was hard because I didn't understand why they do that to me. You know, at that age, you don't understand why, you know, because you're girls, you cannot do that. You're the junkie. There are a lot of people. Um, how can I say this? It's a bit like they were making fun of her, or they were saying, she has no business there. Or I would hear someone younger say, a girl, she is going to replace my boy, who is National League material. Manon had the ability to goaltend in a particular category, but because she was a woman, they picked on her. Sometimes I think it was harder for us to accept that mentality of why let her try than to say why not try her, try her. Every year in Pee Wee Manon was cut from the top level boys team. But when she got to Bantam, she finally found a coach, Pierre Brindamore, who was willing to give her a chance. After that, a door was closed to her. At age 16, every player on her team, and every goalie at her level in Quebec, was invited to the midget AAA tryouts except her. She returned to a second level team, but for the first time, even they wouldn't take her. She was sad, and we felt she was totally fed up with hockey. Her first non-competition game was Saint-Nicolas, Bernier Saint-Nicolas. I've never seen her goal in such a rage. The shots were coming in high, and it seemed that the guys were trying to hurt her. They shot at her from every angle. She jumped, she took the shots to the body instead of to the face. Then she went in and attacked. I sensed the change in her right then. Instead of feeling sorry for herself, she was playing in a rage. Manon began to realize maybe she couldn't go further. The guys, they don't have future anymore really in hockey. They just play for fun. And for myself, I was taking hockey seriously. I just decided to quit that year. I just quit hockey. Manon moved on. For a year, she stayed out of hockey, attending Sejep, a community college, with her friend Carolyn to take a degree in the humanities, planning to become a teacher. It was destiny that changed her plans. I met a girl, then she was playing in the women's league. The women's was a lot better than just in Quebec here, uh, because in Quebec, the girls just started. So that's when I realized, you know, I cannot stop playing hockey. I want to come back and play somewhere. If it's not with the guys, I'm going to play with the girls. Ironically, it was women's hockey that gave her an opening back to the world of men's hockey. That was a great experience playing with the women that year. Uh, we went to the Canadian Championship and uh, the final was on TV. That really gave me confidence back. And uh, one of the scouts of the Trois-Rivières Junior Major team saw that game on TV. And he said, you know, that was great hockey you guys did. So I want to introduce you to our coach. And Gaston Barbeau was the coach of the Trois-Rivières team. So he said to me, if one day you want to come and try practice with us, just, just give me a call. So that day, when he said that to me, you know, I really hear that. <laughs> I didn't let that go. And after practice, Gaston Drapeau said, uh, if you want to come to our training camp next year, you invited. Good practice, guys. Now, the rules for the players are the players are informed in the dangerous and the match. Okay? Elle, elle a performé, I think. At the time, even I didn't think she'd perform that well. 
And the coach, Gaston Drapeau, didn't either. It wasn't a question of giving her a chance because she was a girl. It was honestly the level of her performance that caused us to put her into our organization as the third or fourth goaltender. A lot of fellows said to us, Manon Rion in your training camp? I told them, yes, of course, Manon Rion performs very well. So it's her strength of character enabling her to push ahead as the first woman. The picture I have of Manon is of her strong character and her drive to succeed. For sure, we saw that later, that burning desire to succeed at all costs, and then to say, I can do it. Manon became a third-string goalie for the Drivers, a junior major team, the highest level before turning pro. She moved to Trois-Rivières with her brother Pascal, who was also playing for the team. That year, Manon became the first woman to play a junior major hockey game. Once again, the media descended. Manon Réau ne sera la première fille à garder les buts au hockey junior. Un seul match, une défaite sur la glace, mais une victoire pour ceux et celles qui travaillent à l'évolution des mentalités. Actually, what I remember in this rink, uh, the first real game that I played, my first period that I played was on this net here. And um, my parents always sit in the corner right here, so I knew they're right beside me. <laughs> what I remember too, it's uh, on this net there, that's when I got hurt. I got a shot in my face and the, my helmet broke and it cut my eye open, but I didn't want to just go down and wait for someone to help me. I wanted to keep playing. And the blood just keep coming in my eyes, so I pulled my helmet up. Everybody was looking at me and it looked worse because I had blood all over my face. But the comment I had, a uh, media comment, I don't remember if it was on TV or newspaper, but they said, that's a girl, she got hurt. You know, she should not be playing. It was the first and last time Manon would play at a junior major level. That summer, a scout sent a tape of the game to Phil Esposito, general manager of the Tampa Bay Lightning. It was that tape that would launch her into history as Manon became the first woman to be invited to an NHL training camp. One of the scouts from Tampa Bay, he asked Phil what he thought about that goaltender, and he didn't know at first that it was a girl, so he said, yeah, you know, the goaltender is okay, you know, it's just a little bit small, but doing the same job than any other goaltender at that age. And the scout said after that, it's a girl. And that's when Phil said, oh my God, you know, he got kind of, a flash, you know, this is neat. <laughs> okay, this is um, my uh, chest protector I had uh, for the Tampa Bay training camp. This is a chest protector I used when I was peewee. So I played the peewee tournament with that one. And uh, when I went to Tampa Bay, obviously the shot was a lot harder than when I was peewee. So my dad had to have some protection. That part here, the two plastic, and he put tapes on it. Plastic de son nom, quelqu'un qui m'a envoyé. Miss Goalie, woman start NHL game for Lightning. Now, I'd be a liar to say that I didn't think the publicity was going to be tremendous for a franchise that was never there before. I mean, we got CBS came down there and uh, NBC and ABC. I mean, we were all over the country with that. So her attitude was so good during the whole camp. She didn't show a lot of emotion. That's something I noticed about her. The guys never pulled any punches, and they were told, you shoot the puck where you want, as hard as you want. And in fact, I bet you they tried to shoot it harder and tried to hit her more because of that. You know, and it's just like any other rookie. You take advantage of it. And the fact that she was a woman, too, it made it double, doubly so. Sure, I fell for her. I felt that... Maybe these other guys are going to be picking on her. Maybe they're going to pick on her. Uh, I knew the coach wasn't going to talk to her. That's for sure. Uh, Terry Chris would not talk to her. And I know Wayne Cashman wasn't going to talk to her. So I did it because I thought that she had a chance. And I've always thought that if there was any way a woman could make professional hockey, it would have to be in goal. I remember my first um, 
training camp with Tampa Bay. The first practice we had actually was not a practice, it was a game right away. So I'm doing the warm up and I'm on a bench watching the game going. I'm like, oh my god, this is so fast. And I have to go out there for the second period. I didn't allow any goal. My first ever time professional. And so we ended up winning that game 5 1 against the other team. And it's after that first day that Phyllis also got crazy. <laughs> he came to the locker room and said to me, Oh, you did so well. I'm so excited. And now we need to go for a press conference because all of the media was there that first day. And that's when he announced that I may play an exhibition game. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Wayne Manot played, though. There was no reason for Esposito to be nervous. Twenty year old from Quebec played that first scrimmage like a wily veteran. She faced 14 shots and stopped them all. The player was bigger, the speed was faster, and the shot was faster, too. In it. You feel that the other players want you to succeed? I think all the players in my team tried to help me. They played very well. <laughs> So, what about the first exhibition game this weekend with Minnesota? Will she play? Yeah, absolutely. The coaching staff sees fit to put it for a period in a game, or half of a game. I don't know how they're going to do it. Yeah, she's going to play. I was sit there at the press conference, and as soon as he said that, my legs start shaking. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> I cannot believe it. Think that. Like, I was thinking I'm going to stay there a week and they're going to send me down the first week when they do the first cut, like everybody else. I felt like I was almost in a dream. In 1992, a 20-year-old woman from Quebec became the first woman to play a period in an NHL game in its 76-year history. I was thinking about my game and everything was fine. I was calm. I was not nervous at all and I was preparing myself. When the bus got there <laughs> and I walked outside of the bus, I just felt like that pressure coming and I felt I was really, really nervous. My heart started to beat very fast and that's when I saw the bouquet of flowers sent by a radio station in Montreal. I read the letter saying, you know, we're all behind you. I, you can do it. You're not alone. I was back to myself playing a hockey game and I didn't even really realize that I was wearing the Tampa Bay jersey and I was an NHL jersey. That night when she got into the game against St. Louis, my biggest fear would be that they would have six shots on net and score five or six runs. And that the guys wouldn't give her the support that I felt, because a lot of the players didn't like the idea that she was there. I, coaching staff thought it was a joke. And, but after the first save, and I remember Rob Ramage standing in front of net and clearing out a guy. And the uh, first save, he went over and patted her on the pad. I said, ah, oh, he's going to be okay. And uh, there wasn't a woman in that building that night that wasn't cheering her brains off of this, this girl. And, uh, and I was cheering for her, too. hockey history written last night it was professional sports history for the first time in the four major league sports a woman played against the men again she's been doing it all camp so that's why she played the first period tonight and history was made i breathed i did i breathed a sigh of relief 
not only for her, but for ourselves and our team and, uh, and the situation, and for myself, I guess, because it could have backfired, it could have blown up in my face, no doubt about it. That was the greatest feeling, because um, I knew again how important that was for me to play well. Like, that was not enough for me to have did good during the training camp. That was not enough for the media, because I knew that one or two person was waiting for that moment to just slam me and said, you know, I knew you didn't deserve to be there. I knew you should not be there. So I was proud because nobody could have said that that night. If I was rating her today, I would rate her about a seven and a half out of ten because she made three unbelievable stops on the power play, on the end of power play. My brother said those were as good a saves as he's seen. And the second goal, not even he could have stopped. Nobody could have stopped. That was a good shot. But every time I go on the ice, I have a lot of pressure, and this shot was very uh, hard and very fast. And I don't do this just to hard the first moment. I do this because I love hockey and I want to go higher. I think she's going to play in professional hockey this year, whether it's with us, Atlanta, or Louisville. But she's going to be in our organization somehow. I'm not going to let her get away. I didn't have time to really think about what was going on because I had all those media to answer after and. And it's so funny for me, I've never been in the States, so the Good Morning America, the David Letterman show, and all those big shows, I didn't have a clue how big they were. And the media guy was saying to me, are you ready for that show? And yeah, yeah, I'm ready, but I didn't realize how big it was. Like even David Letterman, until I live in the States, I never watched that show before. Let's go, folks. Our next guest uh, made history uh, when she started in the position of goalie for the Tampa Bay Lightning, becoming the first woman to play professional hockey. My goodness, Manol Creo. So it was a family sport. Everybody in the family uh, began playing at an early age. But did you, uh, at what age as a young woman, did you get serious about thinking, I'm good enough now, I might be able to compete professionally? I never think I can make a tryout in NHL. Uh, I always play because I love hockey. Hockey for me is a passion. Hockey for me is a passion. Say, <laughs> say that again. Just, just say that part again. Hockey for me is a passion. Oh. <laughs> I don't know in English. No, no, no you're <laughs> wonderful. Uh, after that game and I played, Phyllis Wills came to me and, you know, and uh, he said that uh, he wanted to send me to their minor leagues team. You know, he wanted to see what I can do if I was to play with a team, you know, full year, like practicing all the time. So he sent me down to Atlanta. That year, Manon signed a contract with the Atlanta Knights, a farm team of the Tampa Bay Lightning, the first woman in sports history to sign a professional sports contract to play with the men. I'm very happy to come here and... Uh... What is very important is I have a chance to play hockey here. Okay, why didn't you accept the $75,000 from Playboy? <laughs> because it's not in my value and uh, I'm not interested to do this kind of picture. And um, I'm a hockey player, so I'm not <laughs> a person to take picture on this kind of magazine. Sports Illustrated, and there was an article that appeared in there that compared you to the use of a midget by the St. Louis Browns, a baseball team in the 1950s. In other words, it was implying that this is just for publicity. I think everybody has opinion, and I respect all the opinions. Me, when I have the invitation here, I have a chance to do higher than I can, and uh, I take the chance for uh, to try. With upwards of 40% of the, of the NHL crowd being female, though, in their last five years, does this give you that extra added edge? It helps us get the word hockey back on the newspaper back on television, back and getting it, having people talk about it. And that's very important to where we want to go in the future. And our goal is going back to the National Hockey League. Her mission <coughs> and goal is to play. And that's going to be the first thing she's going to do. And then everything else is going to be worked around that, around her schedule. That's, it's, just, it's the fairest thing to do for her. The, the team comes first. At this time, she's the third goalie. The worst thing that could happen is for her to go in nets and not be ready. And there's no point in rushing it. You know, she, when Jean feels she's ready to play, she's going to play. Manon Réaume est la première et la seule femme à avoir signé un contrat avec une ligue professionnelle de hockey. Un contrat de trois ans qui la lie aux Knights d'Atlanta de la Ligue internationale, 
le club école du Lightning de Tampa Bay de la Ligue nationale de hockey. The first year is trying to catch up with the boys. She's only practiced twice a week in, in her life uh, while she was growing up. And now she's going five, six, seven days a week and uh, is working very hard at it. When the players will shoot during the practice, if they start headhunting, if they start shooting high, the guy goalies will say, to heck with this, and they'll skate out. You guys going to do that? You shoot at the empty net. Not Manol. Bang off the helmet. Bang off the face mask. Up bar on the shoulders. Because she's going to face that in the game, being just five foot six. She stays right in there and takes it all. Everybody uh, has kind of fallen in love with her. The night that she did play back in December, this building went absolutely crazy. I can say 90% of the people was behind me and wanted me to do well. But you had that 10% of people They want to be different. They want to be negative. I got called a media snake or things like that. If the media was to come see me, that was their fault. They create that. They create, you know, that public person. And obviously I had to have those questions. Did you break a nail playing? And my answer was, did you ask that to other goaltender? Another media asked me, what did I do when I have my parent? Am I the only girls playing sports here? Like, tons of girls playing different sports. You have to deal with that. No big deal. And I said, and you know what? I like, this is my best time of the month. This is when I play the best games. Yeah, I don't think so that people really know me as a person. They see me as the hockey player. Sometimes I think they think I don't have any emotion like anybody else or I, I'm not a real person. Atlanta was one of the most lonely period of my life and moving for the first time and not just moving but for the first time I have an apartment with bills to take care of you know and it's funny because I think I grew up a lot faster my English was not really good so I had to learn to speak English that was hard at the beginning and especially too because the owners or the GM over there was really pushy as far as me doing promotion there and it got me doing so much stuff and I was exhausted like through the season I had a stomach ulcer just being so stressed out it was a really tough year the penalty is over Gillingham's between the defenders coming in Leo knocks the puck right back to Gillingham count the goal And Raoum could not clear the puck. Gillingham popped it in behind her. It's one to nothing Salt Lake. And Manon Raoum is back to the bench. Manon wasn't doing what she wanted most, playing. She played five minutes in a game earlier in the season and one game at the end, but it wasn't enough. She had a talk with Phil about being traded down a level where she could play more and do less promotion. And I asked the guys in Atlanta that I wanted her to play some. Well, they put her in once in a while. They didn't put her in as many times as I wanted her to be playing. It was in the International League, too, and that was pretty tough. But I wanted her to play. And had I known then what I know now, I would have put her in the East Coast Hockey League where she would have played every game. And it would have been terrific for her. Manon continued to play men's hockey. For the next few years, she moved from team to team in both the East and West Coast leagues, living her dream playing full-time professional hockey. I don't think so it's a problem for a coach to have a girls on a team. It's always, you always have a way to work it out and to make sure that you don't disturb anybody. Every place, they always have an extra room or sometimes I even end up uh, dressing in a referee room. I never want to be a problem. I never want to have the coach said, oh my God, it's such a problem having a girls on a team. Actually, most of the team that I play with Uh, the guys treat me like the little sister. For me, it was normal to be around guys. I've been around guys since I'm five years old, so that was not a big difference. I didn't have any bad experience as far as like sexual experience and guys really, you know, got touchy or tried to arrest me. And I had like some guys who tried to flirt with me, like you can see that in any office anywhere. It's not just <laughs> my situation. Through the years when I can start uh, dating Jay and make it a lot easier because at that time both, uh, every flirting stopped. <laughs> both forearms. Les hommes, ils ça c'était un gars pour toi aussi, t'es trois doigts en bas. 
I met my husband in the uh, second year in New Jersey playing roller hockey. And um, actually, Jerry came from a big trade before at the beginning of the season. I was the four best player of his team, got traded in our team. He was like the big star of roller hockey. So, and uh, you know, he was not really talking to me because uh, he told me later why. <laughs> he said everybody was talking to you and being around you, so I didn't want to be like them. So me, I thought that he didn't like me, or you know, I thought and. You know, he was just mean, or <laughs> so we didn't like each other, you know, at first. But uh, a guy that I knew from Quebec was friend with his Jerry's friends, so we always end up the four of us together doing promotion. So that's how I started knowing more Jerry, and you know, now I started liking his personality, and uh, the same for him, and we just, you know, start dating at one point. What is that? Twenty-three mile already. <laughs> Who? You. Oh. <laughs> you guys didn't have a baby three months ago. She's really accomplished a lot for uh, for women's hockey, and uh, sometimes we both just don't realize what it's what it's like and uh, what she's really accomplished and what she means to a lot of uh, women out there, and especially a lot of young girls growing up. Um, but it's it, it's great. I mean, it's something where uh, you know we're married, we we live together, we hang out together, and we can uh, we can go play hockey together. It's uh, gets up early tomorrow. It's it's a great thing. During her years of playing with men, Manon had always kept on playing side by side with women. To me, to keep playing with the men was helping me out in my women's game to just you know to be a better goaltender. Even if I, I start playing junior, I never stopped playing with the women's. Every year, I wanted to go back to the camp, the World Championship. In 1992, she played in the World Championship game in Finland, where her team won the gold medal and Manon was named Most Valuable Player. In 1994, she returned for the World Championship in the U.S. in Lake Placid. Artisan Canadian crowd here in Lake Placid, New York. And it was nice to come back and see the girls again, as that was my first time coming back after playing pro. You know, and just being there and feel so strong and so powerful compared to in 92 where I went there and I, w I didn't have the same confidence. Now I was coming back from playing professional, like playing every single day, something I never did before. So that was a really, really nice experience, especially because we won again the gold medal and I got to choose again on the All-Star teams. Yeah, Peter, the game has been quite physical. I think both these teams came out knowing that it was going to be. Good save by Manorion. For the first time, there were rumors that women's hockey would one day be in the Olympics. Manor began to have a new dream, to play in the Olympics with women. In 1997, Manon had her best year ever in pro hockey. She played the most number of games in her professional hockey career and had the best average on her team as a goal. Last year, I played in the Sports League. I win all my games. I have no loss. This year, I went in Europe. I win a game in first division over there. I've proved that I can play hockey. But what is very hard for me is everywhere I go, people don't have enough. They always want more and more. They expect me to go play in NHL and win game and have a shutout. No, I'm not superwoman. Manon returned to women's hockey, but she was about to face another challenge. In a controversial move by coach Shannon Miller, Manon was cut from the Canadian women's team. The Three Nation camp in October, I thought I did well. I thought I'd played well those games and I didn't even get choose to play the final game. So for me to not being choose to play the final, I was like, oh my God, something's going on, you know, and maybe they want to see someone else there. Maybe, you know, my time is over. When you're looking at three people who can all play for you, you're going to have to go to consistency. And uh, we made a decision that uh, the other two goaltenders were at this point in time and for this event are playing more consistent hockey for us. To be cut for sure, it's uh, disappointed, especially because of the year I had this year professionally. It's my best pro year. I've been playing a lot of games. The last month and a half, I've been 11 games. And um, 
I have my best hockey the whole year, and uh, that's why I came back here and I was really confident. And I knew the year after that was Olympic and I wanted to be there. So um, I was really, really disappointed. But I uh, just started working out a lot and working harder during the summer and said, you know what, I'm going to go back to that camp in September for the Olympic team and I'm going to show them Then they made a mistake. I don't think so. I thought once uh, to giving up because I was so... I wanted to be there so bad at the Olympics. Then I said to myself, they're not going to stop me. I want to go. I want to be there. So I'm going to do everything I can to do it. I think the coach saw that. These 20 players that you're about to meet represent the Olympic dream that lives now in every female hockey player. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the first ever Canadian Olympic women's hockey team. That was such a great news to hear when I made the team. I think I never felt like I felt at the Olympics in 98 in Nagano. Um, this is something that you cannot explain what it is. The day you walk in an opening ceremony and you're wearing all that Canadian outfit, red and white, and you walk around, you don't you know, uh, sometimes because you know you're on TV or you know you have people, you have to smile. But now you don't have to smile. Like, it's just natural. It's just, you cannot stop smiling. Obviously, the final game, too. You know, to be, to be playing the final game and to be in the final game for the gold medal was an amazing feeling. Come the Canadians, led by Manon Rayom. What a story she's living tonight. One year ago, cut by this team before the World Championships. And tonight, she gets the start for Canada in the first ever Olympic gold medal in women's hockey. Manon Rayom's in goal, and she earned this start. Look at her percentage, 0.81 goals against, but 21 shots in a 4-2 win over Finland. Manon Rayon can really play the puck well. She can get in behind. She can help out the defense a lot. She's very confident with playing the, the puck because of her experience in men's hockey. Timeout called by the Canadians. Huddled at their bench is Shannon Miller. Plots the strategy for this face. Julian in the corner for the U.S. is... Tini on a bad line change by the Americans. Shot! What a good save by Tini. Beach Schmigdahl, she's right in front. What a save as Manon Rayom robs Schmigdahl on the low side. And in the slot, Beach Bailey. What a leg save by Rayom. Tini. Rolet checking Bailey. Here's Wickenheiser in front. He scores! Benadiel going in. Puts Canada on the board. Off the board. It's broken up. Sandra White bearing in on goal. It's in. It's over. The Americans win the gold in women's Olympic hockey. Canada settles for silver. Now the handshake. And Oriol standing on her head for Canada. She held the Canadians in. And since the Olympics, it's just amazing to see the difference between 98 and 90. You know, the girls are a lot stronger, faster, and the game changed, and it kept getting better and better. It's great to see how women's hockey has become now. We're at the Olympics, and we're getting, you know, gold medal, silver medal, bronze medal around our neck. And a couple of years bef you know, ago, you couldn't even think about that. I think Manoa's achieved a, a tremendous amount for women's hockey. Um, just alone her making it to the NHL. I don't know if that's ever going to be repeated again, and that's a, a great honor, but not only for her, but for, for all women's hockey players, and for uh, for the sport, I really think she just got the ball rolling. These days, busy with her new family, Manon is dedicating herself to women's hockey. Her goal? To play in the next Olympics. And although her future career with men's professional hockey remains uncertain, she has left a legacy, not only in women's hockey, but for the girls who want the chance to play with the boys.
different thing. I like, oh, I wish I'm a younger girl and, you know, I'm in the situation now where the girls are allowed to play and they give the chance to the girls. And uh, something I wish the girls before me went to the NHL or went junior, then, you know, that could have been easier for me. But someone had to do it first and it happened to be me. And now maybe because of me, some other girls are given chance in the, you know, younger level and that's great for them and hopefully those little girls can make it higher and maybe when they make it to NHL training camp and do well and be very at the same level than the other guys that's what I wish mm -hmm.